So today I'm going to be talking about outer space law and Elon Musk's plans for Mars. My thesis is that Elon Musk's plans to establish a new country on Mars is an international problem that requires a multinational solution. First, let's talk a little bit about space. Humans have always been fascinated by outer space. Space exploration is a priority for many nations, as well as for the scientific community. As we talk about Musk's plans for Mars, let us not forget that there is an overwhelming global interest in space travel, studying celestial objects, and even operating scientific laboratories in space on planet. Okay, a lot happened last year, and you might have missed these headlines. Last fall, one of Musk's companies, Starlink, started beta testing a new Wi-Fi satellite system, and there was something very interesting buried in the terms of service. Under governing law, Musk essentially preemptively declared independence of a new city-state on Mars. He also started positioning the new quote-unquote government's stance on customary international law, saying the laws of Earth will not reach his new city. What kind of government will this be, you might ask? Well, apparently direct democracy, though there's plenty of reasons to think that won't actually pan out, like some of these. We don't have time for analysis, but let's just assume he's not actually planning on direct democracy. And Elon Musk does a lot of things. So how serious is he about all of this? Well, the SpaceX website already promotes this. And indeed, Musk is apparently planning to start sending humans to Mars within the next five years and expects to have a city in 20 years. But there's a problem for Musk. It's the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. Amongst the most important provisions, the treaty says space is for everyone and no one can claim it. The treaty requires nations to be held responsible for their actions in space, including non-governmental activities such as the private sector. There are currently 110 parties to this treaty, including every space-bearing country. In fact, there's an entire United Nations office for outer space affairs. Outer space, including Mars, is considered to be the Common Heritage of Mankind, or CHM, historically known as Res Communis, or the Commons. It's the idea of a thing that is for everyone and cannot be claimed by anyone. CHM includes outer space, international airspace, international waters, etc. These are areas where activities are expected to be carried out in the collective interest of all states, and benefits are expected to be shared equitably. There are no claims of national sovereignty, and thus no private property rights either. So why does Musk think he can claim part of Mars as his? Can he do that? Maybe. Under the OST, the U.S. is supposed to prohibit their private citizens from violating the treaty, but he could become a citizen of a country that has not signed the treaty. However, some scholars argue that space as CHM has already become CIL, customary international law. This may be why Musk has already said he will not recognize the Earth, the laws of Earth. He may claim his new state is a persistent objector to Earth CIL, including CHM. So if Musk goes to Mars as a U.S. citizen and then claims he's starting a new country, what is that under international law? It's not occupation because Mars isn't populated and Musk isn't a state. It's not discovery because Mars is not terra nullius, available land that no one has claimed yet. And again, Musk is a private actor. It's not filibustering, a private individual waging wars against existing countries, because even though Musk is a private actor, he's not conquering. Musk's actions are similar to seasteading, the concept of establishing new countries in international waters. However, seasteading has never resulted in a recognized claim to a new country. The closest comparison of to what he's doing is probably succession. Musk may already know this. Succession or part of a state breaking away and creating a new state is generally disfavored in international law unless the succession is occurring because of the people's desire for democracy, decolonization, and to flee human rights abuses. This may explain Musk's direct democracy promotion, uh, despite it being contrary to most of his behavior and attitudes on Earth. Further, Musk may use the recent international attention on the U.S.'s history of human rights abuses to his favor. It may also not be a coincidence that he's already asking his customers to agree to Martian Free Planet Declaration in his contract, he can then claim he has the consent of the people, another factor in the policy decisions around whether nations actually recognize succession as legitimate. Well, it seems unlikely most countries would buy this. It's possible some might recognize most country for external political reasons. Iran and North Korea come to mind. Recognition is complicated, and most view recognition simply as declaratory and not creating any new rights of. And the U.S. definitely won't recognize. Over 100 years ago, SCOTUS decided the U.S. is a perpetual union of states, and there can be no unilateral succession. So then what does the U.S. do? It can take months and billions of dollars to get to Mars. Will the U.S. or U.M. really send troops to Mars to rein in Musk after the fact? Further, Musk is building the first commercial launch facility of Texas, where he's launching prototype Mars rockets. Before, the only Mars-capable launch facilities were governed by NASA. Texas has often historically taken adversarial positions towards the federal government, and Musk's location choice may not be a coincidence. One option to get ahead of all of this is the U.S. can try to rein in Musk with domestic legislation before his journey to Mars. However, Mars can also always seek citizenship with a more lenient country on Earth. But this problem also isn't exclusive to Musk. He 
may just be the first to attempt to create a settlement on a celestial body, and the most reckless. Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson already have plans for space tourism and interstellar lodging. To solve all of this, a multinational consortium could be created that regulates and enforces all travel to Mars and Martian residency. The consortium could govern all Martian activity, not just state action, but also private action. This would help ensure that benefits like scientific discoveries are protected and shared with all countries in line with DHM. Nothing like this exists yet, but with the steady emergence of commercial interest in Mars, it seems critical for the future. Elon Musk's Mars plans are a problem for everyone. We should all work together to establish a framework for these types of activities before it's too late. Ashley, thanks so much for your presentation. I think you were definitely facing an uphill battle with how much material you had to cover. So I think you did a really great job and just super interesting. Um, I'm really interested in the private property side of rights in outer space, kind of how to address that. Um, and I wanted to know if there's specifically been like a, a US case about private property rights. So there's definitely been a lot of noise. Uh, there's been a few administrative actions. There's there's been a guy that's selling plots on the moon for decades. There's a woman selling plots in the sun on eBay. There's a company selling stars. Uh, at least for the guy selling the plots on the moon, their, their general response has been, this is why that phrase buyer beware exists. Like it should be well known there's no private property rights. So if someone's paying money for this, it's their fault for buying into it. But there actually was one case. In, in 2003, this guy named Greg in the US decided he wanted to own an asteroid. And he filed a claim for it. And the government rolled their eyes like they always do. But then when the NASA landed a spaceship on the asteroid, Craig sent them a bill for parking and storage. <laughs> and NASA, <laughs> yeah. Points for creativity, Greg. And then NASA quickly denied it and was like, that's not a thing. And then he brought it to court. And he says, hey, they owe me money. I claim this. And the court's like, there's no private property rights in space. So there's only been one case, but there's it seems like a general consensus that there's there's zero rights to this, at least in the US. So it's mostly just been dismissal because there's, there's no basis for claim. Right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. That was a very interesting presentation. Um, I guess my question is, do you think that like there's some sort of, uh, do you think at least all the large countries in the world would be on board with this sort of like multinational consortium? Because I guess what I was thinking was, you know, if there's one big country that doesn't join, Elon could just go to that country and launch his uh, space adventures. So I was just wondering, <laughs> do you think there's, there's some sort of like, is there some sort of agreement already between the big countries? Or do you think that'll be difficult to, to get? Well, I mean, we already have the Outer Space Treaty, which 110 of these countries have joined, and it's pretty okay. much all of the big countries. So they've all pretty much said they're invested in this. And I assume if they have private actors like Elon, they also would not want to be held accountable for them doing this. Like, I was, I didn't have time, but I started looking, like, is Saudi Arabia doing this? Is, like, are there other countries that have really rich people that are like, let's build a city in space? So I would guess there would be consensus for it, but I, I do think there's also that option of some state could go rogue or an actor in their state could go rogue and not follow the rules. But hopefully if you can get those 110 states that already signed the Outer Space Treaty to at least agree to this, there would be enough global pressure and maybe they could do things like regulate materials needed for space launches. Maybe they could do stuff that, that would really um, slow down a private actor who did want to go rogue. Thank you. My best guess. <laughs> so, I'm just thinking, like, you know, I, I'm putting myself in the position of Elon Musk's lawyer, right? And Elon comes to me and says, you know, give me your best legal advice about how I can get away with it. Uh, there's actually, um, you know, a long standing support within Texas to the view that Texas would never actually. Has never legitimately been part of the United States, right? It's an independent state that's sort of claimed by the United States to have taken over Texas was never legitimate to begin with, right? Uh, so, you know, if you're building this facility in Texas, what about Texas seceding from the United States and then supporting him in his claim? He's going to go colonize Mars on behalf of Texas, right, as a citizen of Texas. Well, Texas has tried this. I believe that, uh, isn't that Texas v. White, the case that I just cited? I can't remember. I think yeah. that was Texas, right? <laughs> that was literally yeah. Texas saying, we want to succeed, and the U.S. saying, absolutely not. You don't get to do that. The only thing that Texas could try is they have something built into the treaty. or the, It was actually another joint congressional resolution, which was slightly automatic, bring them in, but that they could turn into five states if they decided to, but they'd still be part of the U.S. So I think they could try but, you know, 100 years ago, the U.S. already decided, like, no, Texas, stop it. Right, but from the 
standpoint of certain people in Texas, that's just the you know the illegitimate Supreme Court backing up the illegitimate United States and its illegitimate claim, right? I think uh, we should all and, bow down at Elon and his lawyer's creativity with this whole network of things that are building right now. I couldn't choose a better state to try to do that. I think it's entirely possible they could try. And I think the best bet from his lawyers would be like, if you can already get into space and get people out there, it'll be too late to rein you back in. So I think going very quickly and trying to go a little bit under the radar, so maybe he can do that. Yeah, so uh, possession is nine-tenths of the law, right? Yeah. <laughs>